keep calm and carry online, keeping the best bits of online learning after COVID-19 by Tom Worthington. Schools and universities made an emergency switch to online education last year due to COVID-19. This was challenging for students, teachers and the education system. What of this should be retained, particularly for more mature school and university students, as the pandemic is brought under control? Come join Tom Worthington, Honorary Senior Lecturer in Computing, at the Australian National University. Find out how he spent seven years preparing for emergency e-learning, how it went when the pandemic stuck, and how we can continue to use the technology and techniques to make learning for students and teachers. Preparing online for a global pandemic. At the Department of Defense, until 1999, I worked on dealing with emergencies, using computers and the internet. I kept up this interest and delivered a series of student projects, lectures and assignments at the Australian National University on using the internet and mobile phones for emergencies, including a global pandemic. Also I assisted the Sahana Foundation with free open source software for humanitarian operations. The approach used in all these projects was accessible web page design compatible with desktop and mobile devices, efficient page encoding for fast download on slow networks, clear use of language, avoiding overly large and complex visual material. In 2008 I was contracted to design an online professional development course in Green ICT, for the Australian Computer Society. This used the Australian developed Moodle Open Sources Learning Management System. Australian Computer Society allowed me to place an open access license on the course. The Australian National University also used Moodle, so I was able to copy the course from Australian Computer Society to Australian National University, and run it for on-campus and remote students. In 2013 I enrolled in and med in distance education at Athabasca University as an online international student to learn how to design courses for online international students. Athabasca were using the Green ICT course I designed. In the conclusion of my capstone e-portfolio and a series of talks, I suggested Canberra's universities should be ready to switch to online learning if a regional crisis kept students from campus. Also I suggested online learning to better compete in the education market. In late 2019 I delivered an international conference paper describing how to provide classroom group teaching to domestic and international students in a way which could be moved online quickly in an emergency. This would be needed for a global emergency three months later. In early 2020 I was preparing to help teach new tutors at the Australian National University College of Engineering and Computer Science when called to an emergency meeting of staff. We were told the university faced an existential threat from what came to be known as COVID-19 and asked if we could teach and assess students trapped overseas online. Several of us had experience with online learning, and being in the computer science school, we were well equipped, so said, yes. I was able to give the tutors a brief introduction to online techniques for teaching and assessment. As T became clear the situation was not going to get better anytime soon, I made small changes to my already blended materials, to make them fully online. In mid-2021, in anticipation of a return to the classroom for some students, I made further small changes, to allow for hybrid mode, with some students online and some in the classroom, linked together. Unfortunately the return to campus was not possible in 2021, and in all I helped teach several hundred students per semester, over four semesters. The hybrid option remains available for 2022. This is documented in my blog, Higher Education Whisperer, an article on the Athabasca University website, and conference papers. X Factor for Student Satisfaction Gary Martin, Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Institute of Management WA, recently asked what gave a quality experience for Australian university students. After scrambling to quickly deliver online courses, universities around the world are asking, what next? 
Do they return to pre-COVID campus-based teaching, provide online courses alongside campus ones, blended learning which has some online and some face-to-face -face elements, or hybrid with classroom linked online? As someone who was trained to teach online, and spent seven years as an online student, I suggest students will expect courses to be available online as a matter of routine. However, they will also expect to have the option of face-to-face -face classes, where they can work with others, under the guidance of experts. What will distinguish a university is the quality of interaction provided, with students and staff. As an online student I found I could manage to study by following the materials provided, doing the readings and exercises. However, it was a very lonely, frustrating experience. What stood out were the occasions when I met and worked virtually with my fellow students. Events with instructors were a highlight. The very rare occasions when I met my instructors were a bonus, as they were on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, 17,000 kilometers away. The Sage on the Stage Professor Steve Blackburn and the team at the Australian National University College of Engineering and Computer Science have shown the X Factor, in the video, Teaching Computer Science in a Pandemic. I suggest, as the video demonstrates, student satisfaction can be improved though personal attention, enhanced with technology. Steve is a distinguished academic, who is also a good communicator, making him a sage on the stage. Steve can present and discuss material in a way which engages the audience. However, he makes it look deceptively easy. Presenting a good lecture to a room full of students is difficult. Projecting your personality to students online is even harder. Doing both at the same time is very difficult. Not everyone will be able to reach Steve's level, but these are skills which can be learned and practiced. In the video, Teaching Computer Science in a Pandemic, Professor Blackburn emphasizes the role of tutors. Called, teaching assistants, in North America, they are critical. While the professor takes center stage, the tutors work with smaller groups of students, assisting in lectures, in tutorials, workshops and laboratories, to guide students investigating topics and practice skills. Here again, tutoring is a skill which takes training and practice, with an extra layer of complexity when carried out online. Backing up the professor and tutors are many other staff. Producing courses, especially online ones, requires educational designers, video makers, and other specialists. Learning designers work with the subject matter experts to structure the learning and assessment, while video makers polish the recorded presentations. The Australian National University has a Centre for Learning and Teaching, headed by Dr Kim Blackmore, to support staff in the colleges. These staff have been busy during the pandemic, with a crash program to move courses online. But they are always busy, so if you need help, give them plenty of notice. Both classroom-based and online learning also require technical support personnel to keep the audio-visual systems, software and networks working. The last decade has seen new software to deliver learning. When working properly, and used as intended, these systems lighten the burden for students and teachers. Tool Up the COVID-19 pandemic has shown that we need to be ready to deliver learning from and to anywhere at any time. As a IT professional at the Defence Department, I was equipped to work from anywhere at any time. As a technology teacher, I routinely carry everything I need to teach in my briefcase. Here is a photo of my home office, upgraded with second-hand equipment for lockdown teaching. I made a point of using low-cost equipment within the reach of the students. There is no point in creating learning materials in a format students can receive. Over the last 18 months, we have seen heroic efforts to rapidly convert campus-based classroom courses for online delivery. Now there is discussion of a return to the classroom. But do we abandon online learning completely? I suggest we can support both, and let the students select their preferred mix. One approach is by Hapke, Lee Post, and Dean, 2020, with their three-in-one hybrid learning. Rather than divide students into distance and campus groups, the students all receive the same online course, supplemented with synchronous hybrid events. 
For these events students can either be in the classroom or online. The hybrid approach, where the instructor has some students in the room, and some online at the same time, is more difficult to manage. However, it does provide the lecturer with the opportunity to still be the sage on the stage. The student has the sense of getting a university experience. But how do you learn to teach online, and how can they really understand what this is like for the student? I suggest you learn online teaching, by becoming an online student, of teaching. You don't know how frustratingly hard it is, until you try it. Enroll in an online course in how to teach. It has to have deadlines, and assessment, to make the experience real. If you find study frustrating, conflicting with family and work commitments, then you know what it is like for your students. Start with something easy, like the Australian National University Coffee Courses, work up to an international online graduate course. Build the course around the assessment. Students worry about assessment, so tell them what it is, and how each learning activity you have supports it. Delete activities, readings and materials which don't support an assessment. Have small assessment tasks every week, to keep the students engaged. 1% or 2% a week will do. Provide results with feedback each week. An example of team teaching are the hybrid workshops for the Australian National University Tech Launcher Program. Workshops are provided each semester for computer project students to help them prepare a capstone reflective portfolio. The workshops were designed to be delivered in a classroom, supported by asynchronous activities and materials delivered using a learning management system, as described in a published paper, Worthington, 2019. In 2019, provision for fully online delivery was included, in case an emergency kept students away from the campus. This contingency was activated in 2020, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. No changes to content, activities, or assessment, was required for the switch from classroom, to online delivery. At each workshop, the course convener, Dr. Charles Gretton, sets the context. The instructor, that is me, manages the students, while the subject matter expert, Tempe Archer, delivers the workshop content. Tempe tells me when to put the students into Zoom rooms for group work, and bring them back. I relay queries from the students in the chat forum. After a workshop, students complete a small writing task for 1% of their grade, and provide peer feedback for another 1%. Then 13 tutors help the 200 students with their portfolios, and assess them at the end of semester, for 14% of their grade. Universities across the world are now struggling to come up with a post-COVID education strategy. On the one hand online learning has shown education can be provided efficiently anywhere, but there is a desire to provide a personal experience. Thomas L. Friedman explored a similar dilemma in The Lexus and the Olive Tree, Understanding Globalization, 1999. Lexus motor vehicles represented the desire for the products of globalization, and the olive tree local tradition. Friedman argued that globalization would win out, but I suggest it is possible to have both. Engineering a car for global standards takes hundreds of specialists' years of work, and costs billions of dollars. So Toyota design a common platform for a range of models, from low cost to luxury ones. Luxury models are hand finished with some premium components, to give a sense of something beyond the ordinary. The approach of an engineered platform, with personal touches added, can be applied to learning. A course can be created by a team of educational designers and subject matter experts, for delivery worldwide, to meet formal government and professional standards. The basics of the course can be provided online, with personal touches added by teaching staff, online and face-to-face. -face. This way the student gets the benefit of quality design, plus the human touch. For further information see the Keep Calm and Carry Online webinar post in the highereducationwhisperer.com blog.